Warning. This story contains artistic depictions of sexual conduct. All characters in the story are over the age of 18. Any similarities to real people or living or dead are coincidental. So welcome back. We're going to continue through this story here. Uh, rather than do it in days, I just do it in small chunks and then just separate it into, you know, little segments rather than doing the whole day just because I don't have the ability to do that. With that being said, we'll uh, we'll jump back in. Robin is returned home from a monotonous day of work, and his daughter basically is recluse because he has ignored her for so long. She just kind of has fallen into herself. And at this point, uh, when we last left, uh, they were at the TV. And this is the conversation I guess they're uh, about to go into. Hey, Sal. Hmm? She makes a small noise, registering my words, but she doesn't reply. Not properly. Am I that undeserving of her attention? That stings a little, Sal. I'm gonna go make a coffee. You want one? Oh, sure. Milk and sugar, right? She nods. Man. I've been married to her long enough that I don't need to double check, but I do it all the same. I feel like I have to. Suddenly, terrifyingly, she feels like a complete stranger. Sally might be my wife, my Sally Pally, but how do I do, how well do I really know her? I know that she giggles like a kid on helium when you prod her with belly button, and I know she has a mole on the underside of her right foot. I know spicy, mo spicy foods make her nose run. Who doesn't do that? And I know she saw Grease six times when it came out in the cinema when she was a girl. And I know how she makes the white sauce for our Christmas puddings, our secret recipe she guard, a secret recipe she guards jealousy from the rest of her family. I know she takes her coffee with milk and sugar, as we just saw, but at the same time I feel like I don't know anything about her at all. Right, I'll get it for you in a sec. Thanks. No problem. Our interactions sound casual, completely natural, but it still makes me feel tense. We were having an argument this, this time yesterday evening about Arabella Waite, of all people. Arabella sodding weight. Are we going to pretend that never happened? And maybe that's why Sally's ignoring me. Maybe she's mad. Or maybe she's just she isn't ignoring me. Maybe she has nothing to say. Isn't that even worse? Is that how little I mean to her? I rise to my feet and pad into the kitchen. I take out two mugs from the cupboard. Sally has a picture of a snork maiden on it. It's one of her favorites. Set them on the counter and start to raffle to the fridge. Ah... Houston, we might have a problem. Sally, there's no milk. She doesn't respond. Maybe she can't hear me, though it seems unlikely. I'm a quiet person by nature, but I developed a rather loud shouting voice after working at Wheat Fields for so long. It was inevitable, really. Kids do that to you. But Sally doesn't say a word. I didn't want a cup of cu uh, coffee of a cup. I didn't want a cup of coffee that much, but I guess this small errand will give me something to do. That was the only reason why I went to the kitchen to begin with. To escape. I'm gonna go to the store and pick some some up. Is that okay? Still no response. I take the silence as confirmation. Uh, 
I close the door of the fridge with a dull thud. Right, back in ten. Silence, nothing more, nothing less. Can't say that I'm surprised. I walk along the riverside, my hands jammed into my pockets. My fingers brush against the cold metal of my keys, strangely reassuring of their clunkiness. It's chunkiness. At least that's one thing that will never change, the chill of my house keys against the palm of my hand. The weather's been particularly temperamental lately. It's hot during the days, but cold at night. I just can't make up, it just can't make up its mind, trapped between spring and summer. That's May for ya. I shiver into my jacket, expelling my breath into the chilly air. I could have taken the car, but I fancy to walk. The sound of my footsteps against the pav pavement is comforting. A little physical exercise never hurt anybody, even if the cold isn't particularly pleasant. I need to work out more. That's what I tell myself, but I know I have ulterior motives. I want to see her again. That girl. But she isn't here. The bridge over the river is empty, devoid of even late night joggers and dog walkers. Come to think of it, I haven't seen a single soul since I started my mini odyssey. Are there no other men out there trying to avoid their wives? The thought makes me feel a bit lonely. This guy is going through some kind of a crisis. This is where an intervention would almost have to be that if he feels this bad and has strayed this much, that he should try to reach out somehow. I am a fool as if she would be out here at this time. It's late. Good girls should be indoors at this hour doing their homework. Not that she goes to school. I don't know if there are many schools in the air that accept cat spirits. I'll have to ask around. I cross the bridge with my heavy heart, trying to set my own melancholia aside. How pathetic. A grown man like me shouldn't be swooning after such a young girl, especially not a young girl who might be a part cat. But it's almost definitely 100% daydream. The wind stirs the leaves and the trees overhead. The water beneath the bridge glows beneath the light of the moon. Belle might not be here, but that abandoned shopping trolley is, and in all of its ghostly glory. It looks mysterious in the dark, its metal skeleton shimmering in the moonlight. An exotic creature of the deep. <laughs> ah. I can hear, just beyond the soft moan of the wind, another sound, a dull creak carried by the breeze. I think I know what it is. There's a small park on the opposite side of the river with rusty old equipment. A climbing frame, a slide, a couple of seesaws, a few swings. I used to go there with Melly back when she was a little girl and didn't feel embarrassed about being seen in public with me. I used to push Melly on those swings and they would creak. They needed oiling even back then, and a fresh coat of paint. She would laugh, delighted, her bobbled hair fluttering in the breeze. It's different now, of course. She doesn't laugh like she used to. I don't think she could, even if she tried. I pause, overrun with nostalgia. I'm sure it's just a few local kids pissing about, wasting time with their while their parents worry, but I'm suddenly curious. It wouldn't hurt to take a quick look in the park. Sally wouldn't mind. I doubt I could ever make our relationship any worse than it already is. Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh, I was wondering if we'd run into each other again. Ah, <laughs> you... You... That's right, it's me, in the flesh, for a limited period only. Roll up, roll up. She ceases her swinging, the heel of her right foot pressed against the ground, and tips her head out to one side. A playful grin flits across her lips. She looks happy to see me, genuinely happy. Her green eyes framed her dark hair. 
framed by her dark hair sparkle. I'm not used to people being pleased by my presence. It catches me off guard. She's very good at doing that. Now what are you doing here at this time? I fold my arms using my best teacher voice. Not that it's much of an effort. She only grins. Huh? Can't go go out for a swing in the park, can she? She shouldn't at 10 o'clock. It's dark. You know what kind of people could be out here. Oh my. Do you think there are all kinds of scary men who would leap at the chance to ravish a beautiful young thing like me? <laughs> the look on her face. I didn't say it in so many words, but I suppose, yeah. Men like you, you mean? I groan. I think I rather walked into that one. I'm not going to ravish you. I just wanted to buy some milk. How disappointing. <laughs> she pouts, her lower lip jutting out like a misbehaving kid. Her fluffy tail sways in the breeze. The ears protruding from the top of her head twitch. The fact she has ears and a tail to begin with is bizarre, but the overall effect is rather cute. It does raise one of two questions, though. Is it safe to, ha to have those out in public? What? The ears. I gesture towards them and Belle gives them a small prod as though she's never seen them before in her life. They twitch again. Oh, you mean these? Doesn't it go without saying? <laughs> well, it might be a little bit risky, but I'm a girl who loves gambling. If you want to win big, risk big, and all that stuff. What are you hoping to win by <laughs> wandering around at night with a pair of cat ears sticking out of your head? Oh, I don't know. Your love and affection, maybe? And how do you know I'd happen to stumble upon you here? Most middle-aged men don't wander around parks in the middle of the night. Not unless they want to end up in the front cover of the Daily Telegraph with a wildly exaggerated statistic about the prevalence of pedophilia in the rural UK attached to their names. Call me a cynic, but I don't think that would work wonders for my career. I just had a feeling, that's all. A feeling? Yep, I find myself drawn to your side no matter where you are or what you do. It's because I love you, darling. <laughs> Don't call me that. Why not? Because we're out in public and somebody might see us. One of my students, for example. But I thought you said girl, good girls don't go out this late at night. <laughs> She's so pushing his buttons. They shouldn't know. Not if they know what's good for them. Then it's no problem. There's nobody here to disturb us. Here, have a seat. She pats the empty swing beside her. It swings in the breeze, the rusty chains creaking like something possessed. I shake my head. I don't know if that's very safe. If the playground at Wheatfields looked anything like this one, Ofsteads would have shut us down quicker than you can say potential lawsuit. Don't be like that. You might be a bigger than me, but I'm sure the swing will handle it. I'd rather not take the chance. My life is difficult enough as it is. I don't want to add a broken leg or a fractured spine to the pile of my pre-existing problems. I really only ever went out to get that milk. Sally will get mad if I'm not back in time. Then why did you start by the stop by the park, huh? I... I pause, rubbing a hand against the back of my neck. She's got me. She's got me and she knows she's got me, because a smirk on her face widens. Deadly. Devouring. Well, if you really can't spare the time to hang out with little old me, it's alright. I understand. You do? I'm almost sorry to hear her say that, though I was trying to rebuff her advances, making excuses, that's all they were. Excuses. 
Yeah, I don't want to put pressure on you. It isn't attractive when girls are too needy. But... She gets to her feet. The swing creaks in protest, swaying precariously. Her legs, protruding from the bottom of her dress, are pale and white, almost dangerously so. If it weren't for the wide smile on her face, I might think she was sick. Isn't she cold, sitting on the swings in such a tiny and such a thin dress, so sheer you can see her shoulders through the transparent straps? Cat girls really are peculiar. I want to come with you. There's something from the store I want to try. Oh? Why don't you just go and buy it then? Because I don't have any money, duh. I've only been able to assume this form for a few days. I'm hardly in a fit state to apply for jobs. And I don't know what skills I have to offer when I'm still getting used to having opposable thumbs. She pauses, her green iris is darting in the light. Darting to the right. I guess I could always sell my body, become a lady tonight. How does that sound? It sounds unwise. Hmm, are you worried about my chastity, Robin? I don't know who I'm more worried about, to be honest, you or the client. <laughs> well, it's true that I'm no ordinary girl, but you know that already, don't you? I am well aware of it. Despite her slender stature, her skinny arms, her inquisitive eyes, there's nothing innocent about Belle. Her eyes, set into her pretty little face, are searing. My skin blisters. I shudder. She isn't the kind of person I want to cross. I don't know the full extent of her powers, and I don't want to see what she's capable of. And I don't want to find out. Alright, I guess I can buy you something, if you want to come with. You would? Really? Her eyes widen with excitement like a child's and she claps her hands together. Her ears prick up alert. That's right. Just don't come into the store with me, okay? Somebody might recognize me. You ashamed of me, huh? I don't want my wife to find out. It might get a little complicated. Yikes, he's already having those thoughts. Right, right. I get it. Don't worry about it. She beams, giving me a quick salute. I can keep a secret, I promise. I sigh, my fingers pressed up against the serrated edges of the house keys. It stings. This, whatever this is, shouldn't have to be a secret. Technically, I'm not doing anything wrong. He's trying to justify his thoughts right now, because he, it, it, so many bad thoughts. I didn't plan to meet Belle out here, I just happened to stumble across her. It's hardly an illicit tryst. We're not having an affair. You're already having it in your mind. But I know, all the same, this isn't something I should talk about. Not with anybody. I can't even explain how I feel about Belle to myself, let alone anybody else. Let alone Sally. Belle was as good as her word. She waited outside the store obediently when I went inside, like a puppy collared to a bollard. Her request was also humble, much to my relief, and easily fulfilled too. And with that, I will go ahead and uh, end the chapter here. It looks like his mind is pretty much straight at this point, and he's trying to justify his actions, the guilt that he feels, to lessen it. I'm not sure when the intimacy parts are going to happen if they do happen at all but the fact that there's a warning sign every time i load the game tells me something is going to happen so with that being said i'll probably uh whenever we get to a chapter that does have it i'll slap it back into the uh beginning of the video obviously i can't i don't know what we're walking into i don't know how explicit it's going to be in wordage i don't know if there's going to be sound effects i don't know if there's going to be pictures lots of concerns Nonetheless, I will try to skirt around it when it comes time to the point that it will not affect the story or it will not take away from what we're trying to find out from here. All in all, though, um, we'll leave it at that, and I will see you all in the, uh, the next chapter that I run through with this. Until next time, 
Cheers.